Welcome to Hannah's Heart. So Hannah, she's just one of the women who did struggle with infertility in the Bible. No matter who we are, we can be inspired by the fact that Hannah took her pain to God and God heard her and was with her. So when she was praying at the temple, she had been weeping and not eating and her lips were moving, but her eyes were closed and the priest was like, Hey, why are you drunk at the <laughs> temple? Because yeah. it can become an obsession when you want Wanting a child so deeply. And desiring that baby and to be a mama. Every holiday, every Mother's Day. This is not a show that's going to promise you a certain outcome. Mm-hmm. But this is a show that says, however God answers your cry, we know that He's enough. Hey, I'm Anne, and you're listening to Hannah's Heart on American Family Radio. You might notice that I'm missing an extra voice today. Kendra isn't here today, but she will be back on the next show with us. Um, We are still excited that you're listening, and you can find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Hannah, as you spell it in the Bible, H-A-N-N-A-H, Hannah's Heart, at Facebook and Instagram. And you can email us at Hannah's Heart at AFA.net. We have gotten lots of emails about prayer requests and about um, questions about the show and um, even some ideas on what to do future shows on. So please keep those coming. We enjoy hearing from y'all. So if you know of anyone else struggling with infertility or miscarriage, consider inviting them to listen to this podcast. Um, Today, I have a friend on, a friend from college, actually, who's going to be on the show, and um, we we keep up with each other, I guess, really just through social media, but um, she's so sweet, and she has a heart of gold for people and for fur babies, and um, Presley, we're just happy that you came on. I'm honored for you to come on today and share your story. Thank you, Anna, for having me. It's just a pleasure to be here. Yes, well, thank you. It's a it's a pleasure for us to have you. Um, so to get us started, will you just tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit of backstory, and maybe about your hubby and stuff like that? Sure. So my name is Presley Casto. I am a South Mississippi native. Um, I met my husband in college, Chris Casto. Um, he played baseball at a rival university and I played soccer at Belhaven University where I met Anne. Um, We got married just out of college and relocated to North Mississippi. So we are just south of Memphis. Um, I work for a nonprofit. um, I'm in ministry and that is uh, through North Star Academy. We are an online international private school and we exist to be able to provide education to families who may not have an accredited education opportunity. Um, And we serve over 165 countries in the 25 years we've been doing this. So our mission is to serve missionary families. But, you know, with the pandemic and online education being a hot topic and a buzzword, we've just seen tremendous growth. And it is such a pleasure to be able to connect with families in such a unique way. My husband works for FedEx, and we have two fur babies, Duke and Durham. We are, or I am a big Duke University basketball fan, (laughs) and my husband just adopted that, I guess, um, (laughs) without (laughs) Uh, Your fur babies are so cute. Every time you share them on Instagram, I'm just like, oh, he's so pretty, because is it Durham that uh, is the white? Yes, he's an English cream retriever, and okay. he is the most loving dog I've ever met in my entire life. He like, seems like I can't it. imagine a world where he's not in it. Oh. <laughs> did you did you get him as a gift one year? Is that what how you got him? He was. We got him around my birthday, so I said he was a gift. Okay. But we we were uh, both in the market to grow our family by four legs. So gotcha. We gotcha. Were, well, You're they are the so precious, and I know, I know. Um, well, for any family, I'm sure, but for those of us who struggle with infertility, our fur babies are our babies. You know, they yeah. they mean just as much to us. I feel like, and um, I know my my fur babies were always there for me. Any any time I had a bad day at home, they were they were there to be with me during that time for sure. Um, they definitely have six cents. That's yeah, for sure. I I totally agree with that for sure. 
Um, so if you don't mind just getting in with the story, uh, when did you and Chris, so you said y'all met in college and you got married right outside of college, right when you got done. How long did y'all want to be married before you started trying to have a, a baby baby? Sure. So Chris and I have now been married five years in December. Okay. Um, I will be real honest. I did not want my own children. Okay. From the very beginning, I had such a heart for adoption, and Chris and I were not on the same page. But for the past five years of our marriage, my prayer has been, Lord, change his heart or change mine. Okay. Wow. And in an instant, God changed my heart. Um, it was wow. July of 2020. You know, uh-huh. everybody's having pandemic babies, and I will say that was not our influence, but um, in July 2020, we found out that my husband had several blood clots um, and been diagnosed with a clotting disorder, and at one point, he even had one in his lung, and we spent the night in the ER, and it was just terrifying for me, and in that moment, my, my reaction was, Lord, you can't take him from me and not have a part of him here with me on this side of heaven. So that was really what prompted us to begin trying to conceive on our own. Wow. Wow. Um, I didn't realize, I remember hearing about Chris and praying for y'all, um, but I didn't realize that's what, you know, what prompted your heart to change. Um, it's crazy how God will use things like that, you know, to start fulfilling his plan for your life, you know. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you need- sense of humor I tell myself oh, for, <laughs> that's true that's true I you know last year um I think I've shared this on the podcast before but last February um in 2021 I had finally been like God I give up I surrender I'm tired of doing all these doctor's appointments taking none of the medicine da, 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 tracking um yeah, I'm fine without a baby it was my first time to ever be able to say that and then I was so confused when I had my first positive pregnancy test at home. Like, what? You know, like I was, I wasn't prepared. For, you know what I mean? Like, I just wasn't prepared for that. Um, and so I always say, like, God, I don't, I don't understand your ways. But um, you know, that's we just have to trust Him in those ways, even when they don't make sense to us. Um, so in so you decided that's 2020 that Chris was in the mm-hmm. hospital and you decided you wanted to start trying to have a baby. So what did that then look like for y'all after? That sure. Time? So let me go back a little bit further. Um, as I mentioned, I didn't I didn't really want children of my own. The idea of pregnancy is probably the biggest fear I have in life, and child labor maybe number two. <laughs> um, but back in October of 2017, we had just moved to South Haven, and I'm not necessarily wanting children driving in my car, leaving my in-laws' house, and for the very first time, I heard the Lord speak audibly to me, and it was, you are going to struggle mm. to have children. Wow. And I came home, I told Chris, um, it, again, it didn't occurred to me what that necessarily looked like, um, right. but I wasn't ready for children. Um, we weren't on the same page, but I, I communicated it to him, and he's like, you don't know that. You're just saying that because you don't want children of your own, thinking I was trying to sway his opinion of the um, our decision, but truly, that was the Lord speaking to me. And so, fast forward, July 2020, we start trying, and we tried for several months, and it's not uncommon to try to conceive for a few months, um, right. but I did have my annual appointment, and I had to have an ultrasound scheduled immediately following. Um, my doctor thought I might have a mass, which I'd had a previous mass um, back in 2017 as well, um, and so I had an ultrasound scheduled for October, still not pregnant, um, but thankfully, the mass was just a cyst. It wasn't anything to be concerned about. Um, but she told me that if we were not pregnant in six months to give her a call and then we would come back to our OB and see what our options were. So still not pregnant, June rolls around and they start us on a hormone supplement, letrozole, which is Mm -hmm. to help you ovulate. 
And we did three months of that. And with no success, I came back to the doctor and she referred me to a specialist. And I'm, I'm just so grateful she heard my heart behind it because most people you have to be trying for a year to two years before they'll even refer mm-hmm. you. That's right. So I was very grateful for my, my physician. And then she also scheduled an HSG exam, okay. which essentially is checking to make sure your fallopian tubes are open and doing what they're supposed to. And let me tell you, with everything I've had to go through so far, that was the worst. Uh, I agree with you. I, I had the same thing done actually in the Memphis area actually is where I was sent to get that done. And that was oh, wow. not fun at all. <laughs> Nobody prepared me for what it was going to be like. They made it sound like such a minor procedure and it was horrible. No, it scarred but. me. <laughs> it, it scarred me. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not alone. Um, but, <laughs> but that is what people say. If you look it up on the internet, it makes you think like, oh, this is not a big deal. You know, if you've had an ultrasound, right. you'll be fine. But no, it, it, it was horrible. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I hate that for you, but I am glad I'm not the only, the only one that freaked out in the room because I did. I, did. I, I was a baby. Oh, it was horrible. Um, so fast forward just a few weeks later, I had my infertility associates um, appointment and um, I got some concerning news about my AMH level, which had no idea what that meant at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but essentially, your AMH level is indicative of your um, egg reserve. You know, okay. you're born with the number of eggs you're going to have for your lifetime. I didn't know that either. But as women, we don't make egg right we just released what we have from our reserve Mm -hmm. um so my level was below average um but my doctor wanted to do some additional blood work and then we came back in november and my levels from june to october dropped off tremendously so the average woman in the 25 30 range has a 4.3 amh level mine is at a 0.61 oh my god so i'm in the fifth percentile of women my age for egg reserve. Wow, Preston. It was just really hard news to take in. Um, Our doctor recommended IVF, which is really expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, And he gave us our percentage. And most people with an average ovarian um, egg reserve is got a 50% chance of success. Okay. Well, for me, with my levels being what they are, we had less than a 25% chance. My oh my doctor looked us in the eye and said, I will be overjoyed if we get one good egg. Oh, man. So that was at your very first appointment with the specialist. So that we took more blood work at our first appointment and then came back a few weeks later. And that was the, the information that we got so you're brand new in this infertility world and then you hear almost like a bunch of stuff you don't even really understand at first and then that's really hard yes. news to take in um, but I was also grateful in that moment to to have an answer to know yeah. what the cause of it was I think there's so many people that have unexplained infertility and just the not knowing mm-hmm is enough to make you crazy. Right. So I, even though it wasn't the information we wanted, we were just grateful to have answers. So after that, what was, did they then suggest for you to do IVF? Like what, how did we get, what did you do from there? Sure. So he gave us um, several different pathways. There was IVF, there was egg donors, there were also um, adopting embryos, which a little bit different, a lot more affordable, um, but it okay. has no part of mom or dad. It's right. embryos that have already been fertilized. Okay. Um, but we start pursuing the idea of IVF. Chris had a lot of reservations outside of just mm-hmm. the initial financial obligations. Um, but we both began to pray over it. We prayed over it from November to the end of December, and we essentially we're on the same page finally that it was something we wanted to pursue because if we didn't, I, 
I just couldn't imagine not at least trying right, and right. saying um, we put our best foot forward. But my my prayer through all of this was, Lord, give me exactly what I need. I don't want to have any extra embryos that I have to make hard decisions over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that is something, too, that people don't even know about IVF, you know. Absolutely. Um, So we begin IVF in January. We have our trial transfer January 25th. And then we're getting down to the wire about to do our retrieval. And we have a huge ice storm in Memphis. And nobody has power because, you know, ice and snow in the south, nobody knows what to do with it. (laughs) That is true. Um, oh, so great. thankfully, I got to go in. Um, I, I don't know if they were hooked up to a generator or what, but they were the only people with power at that time. But I got to do my final um, ultrasound check-in, and then we scheduled our retrieval for the following week. And on February 10th, they retrieved eight eggs, oh, wow. which was way more than we would have ever thought. Um, but when they woke me up, because, you know, with IVF, you can do a frozen transfer or you can do a fresh transfer. Okay. The benefit for me doing a fresh transfer is that there was no time for anything to happen to the embryos at the end of it. You know, you can have your embryos drop off if they're frozen. Okay. Now, okay, so I don't know this part of it. So they grade your embryos once they're fertilized um, and essentially you can drop down a grade um, from my understanding if you're a medical professional. And I, I could be totally misunderstanding this, but they could drop off a grade after they have um, thawed. Okay. So with our okay. fresh transfer, we were supposed to have our, our transfer five days following our retrieval. But when they woke me up from my retrieval, um, my doctor didn't do the retrieval. Um, another physician at the clinic did and he was great I really appreciated his bedside manner but he informed me that I was no longer going to have a fresh transfer because I had a mass in my uterus that they were going to have to biopsy so that's your third mass to have is that right technically it's my second the, the previous one they thought was a cyst or they oh, found out oh, was right a cyst. right you said that so, so um so At you were prepared point, for a, tr- a fresh transfer coming up. Yes. And when they and found so, the mass, they said that that couldn't mm-hmm. happen. Correct. So we had to push back our transfer. Um, we had to schedule another procedure, which is essentially very, very identical to the retrieval we had just had, the same level of sedation and recovery and all the things. Um, and that was about a month later. I had my follow-up a month and a half after that, um, just because my doctor wanted to give my body some time to rest and to recover. Um, and now it is still waiting on our final transfer. So we'll begin medication hopefully this week, and it'll be about four or five weeks before we are able to transfer. Wow. But so I did, know. We like, did. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. We did end up with two fully mature embryos, which is more than we could have asked for. Wow, that's um, awesome, Presley. I'm I'm really I'm really excited. Um, and the funny thing is, is with my history, and typically doctors don't make this recommendation, but our doctor has recommended that we transfer both. Okay. Of our embryos, so we have a one in four chance of twins. Wow. If it's Oh my goodness. So if you, so when, when they do this, they will do a frozen transfer now. Is that correct? correct? Okay. So with infertility, I know I I didn't ever experience IVF. We were told we were going to need to do IVF and we never did get to that point. But I know each little um, time that I had to go, we did some IUIs, and one time the medicine hadn't worked correctly, and one time my body had already done what it should have not done yet and things like that. And those always felt like 
losses you know what I mean like because I was prepared my heart was prepared to do this procedure to be one step closer what I felt like and then when you hear that kind of news it feels like you get five steps back is that how you felt whenever you went in there you know and you're hearing that you have this mass and so you can't do this procedure the way that you thought you were going to absolutely um and I tease, if it can happen, it's going to happen to me. I just, that's just been my <laughs> life's motto. Um, like I said, God has a sense of humor, and he continues to prove that to me daily. But that's exactly what it felt like. And, and this whole journey has, there have been several setbacks. If I could give any advice to anyone walking through IVF, IUI, adoption, write everything down. Mm-hmm. Um I've written every everything that has gone wrong down, everything that has gone right down. I have written down my prayer requests, my praises, and how sweet it is to be able to go back and reflect and see how those things that you thought were set back and mm-hmm. disturbances, to see how God redeems those and uses those to write your story in such a more beautiful way than you could have imagined. And we're not pregnant yet, but I still see, looking back on all of those things, how he was molding me and teaching me and refining me through all of those setbacks. Wow. I I did not do that, what you're talking about, writing those things down like I wish I would have. I started in the very beginning doing more of that, and then as life got busier with um, some kiddos we had through foster care, I just didn't didn't think about it but you're so right looking back I I think I had my life pictured way differently than what it is right now but I love what it is right now and so acknowledging that the Lord did those things not to me but for me or allowed those things to happen for me has helped me so much in my relationship with him and not viewing it as something so negative, you know. Um, I feel like I definitely had to get to the point where I could thank God for infertility, and I never did think I would get to that point of being able to do that. But um, I finally was able to get there, and when I was, I feel like that's when my heart was fully able to, to accept all the things that he did have for me and do what you're saying to view it and to see the the good things that can even come from the hard parts. Um, Hmm. So where you're at now, now you're waiting to possibly start meds this week. Yes, it's um, the Lord is teaching me to be patient. I know that for certain because I'm not the most patient person in the world. <laughs> um, and I am very much a planner. I, my husband teases me, but I mean, I have our kids, boy or girl, first, second, third birthdays already <laughs> planned out in my head. Um, and so the Lord is definitely teaching me that my plans are not His plans and His plans are better. So I'm just having to lean into that and trust who we know God's character to be and also remembering who our character is as humans as we're forgetful and how easy it is to rely on our own understanding and get frustrated Mm -hmm. when things don't turn our way. But it has truly taught me to allow God to be our daily bread hourly. Hourly, I have to set my mind on Him and to remember that. I can wait expectantly on Him and trust who He is and trust His plan. But also be able to trust that if not, he is still good because he is still good. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you, friend, for sharing that. Is there any, when when you think about your daily, what you're talking about, trusting him daily and waiting on him, what scripture comes to mind or that you keep out that you might cling to um, daily that you might could share with the listeners? Absolutely. So my goal for 2022 is to memorize the book of James, oh, wow. um, but specifically James 1, 2 through 4 has been one that I've kept on repeat, and it is, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you have faced trials of many various kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces 
perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be made mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God because he gives generously without reproach. Presley, if you don't mind, would you lead us in a prayer over the women that are struggling um, with infertility and making the decision with IVF? Absolutely. Father God, I just thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to point people to you through our stories. And God, I just thank you for the way that you have uniquely shaped us as women and our desire to have a family. Father, I pray that you would be with those who long for that. And I pray that you would be near to them. God, and I pray that you would sustain them. For we love you and we ask all of these things in your name. Amen. Presley, thank you for being here. And thank you all for listening to Hannah's Heart on American Family Radio.